A full bench of the Pretoria High Court, led by Judge President Dustin Mlambo, has set aside the 2016 findings of the Arms Deal Commission with costs. In handing down judgment, the court found that the commission failed in its legal mandate to test the veracity of crucial evidence. The evidence leaders also failing to ask probing questions to implicated persons. Right to know and corruption watch are vindicated. The court this morning ruled in their favor. They wanted the findings of the Siriti Commission set aside. They argued the Siriti Commission was a whitewash and a waste of almost 140 million rand of taxpayers' money. The Pretoria High Court found the Commission failed to interrogate claims by advocate Fanat Longwani, refused to admit records of Shabir Sheikh's court proceedings, and failed to probe the involvement of former presidents Tabombeki and Jacob Zuma. The manner in which the evidence leaders and members of the Commission approached critical witnesses, particularly Mr. Chippy Sheikh and Advocate Longwane, exhibited a complete failure to rigorously test the versions of these witnesses by putting questions to them with the required open and inquiring mind. Given the wealth of allegations contained in material in the possession of the Commission against them, it failed to confront these witnesses with these serious allegations, which were made against both in respect of corruption and wrongdoing. The initial acquisition costs of the Gripen fighters, Hawk MK120 jet trainers, Augusta A109 helicopters, and Type 209 submarines was set at around 30 billion rand. The final cost ballooned to 70 billion rand. President Jacob Zuma established the Siriti Commission to probe allegations of fraud, corruption, and impropriety. 140 million rand later, the Commission's findings have been set aside. We welcome uh, the decision of the court, naturally. Uh, we've always held that it was a whitewash because the Commission failed to gather very easily accessible evidence. It failed to put into the public domain evidence that was key, and it also failed to test the veracity of witness testimony. So we've always felt it was a whitewash, and we, we're glad that the court made this ruling. The order was granted with costs. Offense Estimo, SABC News, Pretoria. All right, the director of Open Secrets, Henny van Furen, and the deputy national coordinator of Right to Know, Khalib Galant, uh, join us now from our studio in Seapoint. Of course, Right to Know bringing this whole application with Corruption Watch. Uh, let me w start with you, uh, Khalib. This, this is breathtaking that the whole commission was a waste of time and money and effort. What does your victory, your court victory, mean for South Africa? So I think uh, two, uh, there are probably two points. One is that the going forward commissions of inquiry will have to be far more careful about how they handle um, the task that is given to them. Um, and given the number of commissions of inquiry that are currently underway and probably will be there in the future, um, that's quite an important aspect for us. Um, but also it's confirmation of what many voices in civil society have been saying um, for many years, which is that the commission was set up um, really to whitewash the arms deal, the corruption and the fraud that, was, uh, that went on in the arms deal, um, and was part potentially of the hollowing out of our institutions um, in democracy. So for us in Right to Know, but really um, we're one actor um, out of a host of them um, that have been fighting this battle for a long time. Uh, we're very happy. Does this show up the judiciary because a, a judge allowed this evidence to be laid? The court says it wasn't uh, aimed at getting to the truth or, or does it strengthen that institution, the fact that wrong approaches uh, can be overturned and corrected? So I guess our constitutional democracy is really based on three planks. One is the rule of law and respect for the rule of law, but you need strong institutions and the commission of inquiry is one of those. And then you need trusted processes in those institutions. So what this judgment does is it reaffirms um, both uh, those three planks um, and that where a commission of inquiry or an institution is given a task, 
Um, it really needs to execute that task without fear or favor. Um, and one cannot use or abuse the processes to undermine that particular task. So this is a really important uh, judgment, we feel, from that perspective. Um, and going forward, trying to rebuild our institutions that promote democracy, yeah. um, it's an important uh, judgment um, for giving direction in that regard. Uh, Henny, let, let's bring you in here. Patricia DeLille tweeting today, um, also saying this was a whitewash uh, several years ago, uh, but suggesting that this wasn't just incompetence, it was malicious. She says the outcome was decided long before the commission started. Um, uh, what is that, does that mean? Was this malicious? I mean, this points to some sort of conspiracy. Yeah, I think Patricia de Lewis, uh, uh, Patricia is uh, prone to some conspiracies at times, but we certainly within civil society and as whistleblowers around the arms deal approach this commission uh, in the spirit of democracy. And we said it had strong, uh, quite broad ranging, wide ranging terms of reference. We wanted to give Justice uh, Willie Sariti and his colleagues an opportunity to prove themselves. And so I, I don't think there was any real suggestion at that point that there was a definite conspiracy. And certainly uh, if, if uh, you know, politicians and others participated in that throughout, uh, including Patricia de Lille, uh, and I don't think they raised it at the time. So it might be a bit of a cheap shot to do that right now. But what we did see very soon within the process was that Willie Sariti uh, simply refused as judge to accept key pieces of evidence, to hear the evidence presented by, by uh, important whistleblowers, and in a way protect the powerful, protect the powerful connected politicians, protect the big European armed companies, which we shouldn't forget are all implicated in corruption yeah. in this deal. Um, and I think that's the importance of what has happened today, is that Justice Mlambo and his colleagues have affirmed, as Khalib was saying, the integrity of our judiciary uh, and, and in a way to say that they would, they are the ones that must censure their colleague, uh, Willie Sariti, yeah. and ensure that this kind of conduct doesn't uh, continue. There can't be another commission of inquiry that acts in the same way. So I think it sends an incredibly okay. powerful signal. But so, to recognize, so of course, us, that there were these very yeah. powerful actors involved. Remind us why claims by Fana Hlongwane, for example, um, why records from Shabir Sheikh's trial were not admitted. You've even said uh, that there was evidence in France and in Germany there uh, that those companies were, were paying bribes. Why was it all not considered? Take us back. Well, you know, I think it's extraordinary that it wasn't considered. The, the, the evidence is certainly there. We first think about the more than container load of material that the, is in the possession of the NPA of corruption in the arms deal or evidence that po points towards that, certainly that's been gathered at great cost over time. But there were low-hanging fruit. One of those was a trial against former President Jacob Zuma's financial advisor, Shabir Sheikh, in which Sheikh had been found guilty and, lest we forget, sent to prison for corruption in the same arms deal. When uh, there were attempts to remind Judge Sariti that he may wish to consider this, he simply chose to ignore it. He said that he wasn't going to look at this. We argued at the time as civil society through the right to know and many 40 other organizations that it was inexplicable that the justice should not consider this. I'll give you another example if I can, Francis. Uh, the United States Department of Justice investigated some of these issues involving British arms company BAE, who is alleged to have bribed uh, f top politicians in South Africa, and their middleman, their agent, was Fanat Longwane, uh, uh, who still lives at large in Johannesburg and is a very wealthy man today. And again, uh, the, the, the actual reports and documents there were, s the, the commission simply refused to hear that evidence, despite the fact that it was their peer organizations in other countries that were, were collecting it. And I think what we saw was a trend of conduct in this commission which was to simply look the other way when it came to evidence that would implicate the powerful, whether it would speak poorly of former President Thabo Mbeki, former President Jacob Zuma, and certainly speak poorly of any of the big European arms companies. Uh, and I think that is, that is what led us uh, to the sense that there was a cover-up. And for whistleblowers like myself and others to respond to a call by civil society to withdraw from the commission, which is what we, yeah. we did. And I think um, today's ruling is a vindication of the concerns that have been raised by civil 
civil society All over right. many, many years. Uh, Khalib, what, what now though? Uh, I mean, can South Africa go through another commission uh, considering more time has passed as well? So one of the things we didn't ask for specifically was that a replacement commission of inquiry be established again. We've already spent 150 million rand um, on this particular investigation. Also, I have to remember that a commission of inquiry is an investigative body. Um, its purpose really is to surface evidence. Um, it is not going to prosecute um, anyone for wrongdoing. It can make recommendations for sure, um, but that's its remit. So we believe that, in fact, uh, there is enough evidence already in the possession of the NPA, of our pro prosecuting authority, um, for them to do their own investigation of that. And uh, if there's sufficient evidence there to mount um, a criminal prosecution, that they should actually be taking th those steps. Mm. People have been named. Evidence has been pointed at. Um, it's up to the prosecution authority to verify that and to build a case. So that's really where we would be looking towards. Uh, we have New Broom in the NPA, um, a, a resolve also to go after um, instances of corruption. So certainly in civil society, we will be expecting yeah. um, some further action from, from that quarter. And very quickly, you said this is a, a wake-up call for other commissions, how they conduct themselves. Uh, have you been following the Zonda Commission, for example, in light of this judgment? How would you evaluate uh, the way the Zonda Commission of uh, looking at state capture is interrogating evidence right now? So I think it's maybe too early in the day already, although it's already a year that the Zonda Commission has been sitting. Um, we, we do see a, a, a vast difference um, in approach um, to the evidence and the evidence by the evidence leaders um, in the Zondo Commission. Um, and, you know, I think uh, uh, Deputy Chief Justice uh, Raymond Zondo takes his task incredibly seriously uh, and has been working really hard in terms of uncovering the rot in various uh, state-owned enterprises. So we're very supportive of, the, of that commission and how it's conducting itself. But, of course, our role in civil society is to also um, be critical where, where critique is needed. Uh. All right, uh, let's leave it there. That was Henny van Furen, who's the director of Open Secrets South Africa, and Khalib Galant, who is the deputy national coordinator of the Right to Know campaign uh, that was involved in asking the court to overturn the Sariti Commission's